point. Peace is possible. It is possible. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. I can't even say that it is more likely than not, but it is possible. I know it doesn't seem that way. There are always going to be reasons to avoid risk. There are costs for failure. There will always be extremists who provide an excuse not to act. I know there must be something exhausting about endless talks about talks and daily controversies and just the grinding status quo. And I'm sure there's a temptation just to say, ah, enough. Let me focus on my small corner of the world and my family and my job and what I can control. But it's possible. Negotiations will be necessary, but there's a little secret about where they must lead. Two states for two peoples. Two states for two peoples. There will be differences about how to get there. There are going to be hard choices along the way. Arab states must adapt to a world that has changed. The days when they could condemn Israel to distract their people from a lack of opportunity or government corruption or mismanagement, those days need to be over. Now's the time for the Arab world to take steps towards normalizing relations with Israel. Meanwhile, Palestinians must recognize that Israel will be a Jewish state and that Israelis have the right to insist upon their security. Israelis must recognize that continued settlement activity is counterproductive to the cause of peace and that an independent Palestine must be viable with real borders that have to be drawn. I've suggested principles on territory and security that I believe can be the basis for these talks. But, but for the moment, put aside the plans and the process. I ask you instead to think about what can be done to build trust between people. Now, four years ago, I stood in Cairo in front of an audience of young people. Politically, religiously, they must seem a world away. But the things they want, they're not so different from what the young people here want. They want the ability to make their own decisions and to get an education, to get a good job, to worship God in their own way, to get married, to raise a family. The same is true of those young Palestinians that I met with this morning. The same is true for young Palestinians who yearn for a better life in Gaza. That's where peace begins, not just in the plans of leaders, but in the hearts of people. Not just in some carefully designed process, but in the daily connections, that sense of empathy that takes place among those who live together in this land and in this sacred city of Jerusalem. And let me say this as a politician. I can promise you this. Political leaders will never take risks if the people do not push them to take some risks. You must create the change that you want to see. Ordinary people can accomplish extraordinary things. I know this is possible. Look to the bridges being built in business and civil society by some of you here today. Look at the young people who have not yet learned a reason to mistrust. Or those young people who have learned to overcome a legacy of mistrust that they inherited from their parents because they simply recognize that we hold more hopes in common than fears that drive us apart. Your voices must be louder than those who would drown out hope. Your hopes must light the way forward. 
Look to a future in which Jews and Muslims and Christians can all live in peace and greater prosperity in this holy land. Believe in that. And most of all, look to the future that you want for your own children, a future in which a Jewish, democratic, vibrant state is protected and accepted for this time and for all time. There will be many who say this is not possible, but remember, remember this. Israel is the most powerful country in this region. Israel has the unshakable support of the most powerful country in the world. Israel's not going anywhere. Israel has the wisdom to see the world as it is, but, but this, is, this is in your nature. Israel also has the courage to see the world as it should be. You know, 